Mid-gray is the colorist's most important tool that's not a knob inside of DaVinci Resolve because it's going to make every knob that we do turn work better and faster for us. Let me show you what I mean here inside of Resolve. So the first way that we can use mid-gray to our advantage to make our knobs work better and faster is to pay attention to the pivot point within our contrast pivot adjustments inside of this ratio node in my template node graph, which is where I make all of my contrast adjustments. And if we think about the idea of contrast as being independent from exposure, so I'm gonna expose my image up or down separately in my exposure node, and we just think about contrast, whether we want to add contrast or pull contrast out. Generally speaking, if our exposure is in a good position, we're going to want to neutrally either increase contrast in the shadows and highlights or decrease contrast in both areas at a one-to-one -one ratio. We don't want to add more contrast in the bottom or the top or vice versa. We want to have a neutral introduction or removal of contrast. This is something mid-gray can help us with. If we look at this 0.435 value that my pivot comes in at as a default, it sounds kind of reasonable, right? If we think about this range that goes from zero to one and 0.435 being just a little bit less than 50%, that sounds reasonable. But if we now think about mid-gray and we know that the mid-gray point in different color spaces is going to differ, then we can set our pivot point to align with the mid-gray of the color space that we are working in. Today, we happen to be working in the Da Vinci Intermediate color space. And if I go over to my mid-gray cheat sheet, which I'm gonna leave a link to for a free download of for you guys in the uh, description of today's video, I can go down to Da Vinci Intermediate and I can find my normalized zero to one value for Da Vinci Intermediate. This effectively is my neutral pivot point, my mid-gray point for Da Vinci Intermediate. So if I go in, and I set my pivot point to a 0.336. And even better yet, if I save this node with this value keyed in into my template node graph that I'm gonna be reusing on all of my shots, this means that on average, I'm going to have to adjust my pivot knob less, if at all, because this by definition, by the numbers, is going to allow me to introduce or remove contrast from my image in a one-to-one -one manner so that shadows and highlights are being affected at the same pace at the same strength. So that's the number one way that I will use mid-gray in my color grade is just to set that pivot point in my ratio node. And what that's gonna do is allow me to make one adjustment, use one knob, instead of having to use two knobs because I'm already pivoting around the proper position. So that's one great example. I wanna show you another uh, way that I use mid-gray and we're gonna do this using another tool that I make available for free to you guys. This time we're gonna use my exposure chart and we're gonna work over here at the timeline level of my node graph. Now you can see here, I've already got one node in place here at the timeline level of my node graph, which by the way, is just a way of affecting all of the shots in my timeline as opposed to just one of them. This is a LUT called Mars. It comes from my Voyager Pro Pack and all it's doing is giving me a bit of a color palette to my image but it's not really adjusting my contrast at all. I want to add my own creative contrast curve. And this really falls under the heading of look development. But the number one thing that we can keep in mind when we are beginning our journey of look development, or even when you're more advanced in look development, is to pay attention to middle gray. Because if you think about it, a look has to apply to all of the shots in your timeline. And if a look is biasing your exposure up or down, you are creating the need for a compensation that you are going to have to address in every single shot that you tackle. So if my contrast curve that I'm about to draw here drops my exposure by say a third of a stop, that means that on average, without even necessarily being aware of it, as I go through and grade each individual shot, I'm gonna have to open each shot up again and again and again and again by about one third of a stop. So we wanna avoid creating the need for compensations. And that's really one of the big themes we're gonna see with middle gray is that being aware of it and using tools like the ones that I'm sharing with you today, you can eliminate that need for compensations and allow yourself to take a more direct path to getting the strongest possible image. So let's build ourselves a creative contrast curve. A contrast curve, let's try that again. Let's, here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna create a new serial node here and I'm gonna go to my effects tab at the upper right and I'm gonna grab DCTL and drop it onto node number two here. And I'm gonna scroll through my list here 
and I'm going to find my exposure chart. Okay. What I want to do is set my tone curve to DaVinci Intermediate, and I'm going to set my total steps to one. Now I'm going to turn this show ramp checkbox off so that I've now just got a pure patch of middle gray in DaVinci Intermediate. And you can see here on my histogram, this is giving me this kind of single tooth here uh, in the scope. And really the only reason I've done any of this is so that I can go forward to node number three, where I'm going to draw my creative contrast curve. And if I go over to my custom curves, which is the tool that I like to use for drawing my creative contrast curve, you can see I've got that same single tooth here in the histogram. And all I have to do now is go up into my image itself and use my eyedropper and tap on this mid gray point. And I've now created a control point at middle gray. So what this means is that as I start to adjust contrast above and below middle gray, middle gray itself won't change. So again, what this is doing is allowing me to impose a kind of constraint on my look development, on my creative contrast curve, that's going to ensure that as I'm introducing a desirable aesthetic into my images, I'm not causing images that are ultimately going to feed through this look to be biased up or down and in doing so creating more work for myself where I have to compensate for that when I'm grading the individual shots. So now that I've done this, I can delete this node, but before I do, if I wanted to, I could label this and call this DWG gray, and I could actually save this as a power grade. As you can see, I've already done here in my gallery, I've already got a power grade saved here called DWG gray. And now the next time I need to do this, I can simply drop this power grade directly onto an empty node. And all those parameters that we went through and had to modify to get this version of the exposure chart happening, have automatically been applied to the image. So it's a good time saver. And uh, for those of you who've been asking, how do I do that? How do I produce that and get that uh, so uh, quickly pulled into my node graph? That's the way I go in, I set up these parameters as I want them to be the one time. And then I simply uh, grab a still with nothing else turned on here in the node graph and save it into a power grade folder that I can go back to whenever I need to use that exposure chart in this configuration the next time. And now that I've got that, I can wipe this out. That's all I needed it for. I just needed a contextual way to drop my middle gray point. And now I can draw a creative contrast curve. And we've got lots of videos where we talk about the different uh, factors that go into drawing your creative contrast curve. But the best part about doing things in this way is that I can feel free to draw whatever creative contrast curve that I want. And I can be confident that I'm not moving my middle exposure. And as a result, I'm not biasing exposures up or down or creating more work for myself at the individual shot level. So that's another example of a way that I use middle gray and these tools that I've made available to you guys for free to anchor my choices and to get better and faster results when I'm grading using the same tools that everybody else has, but giving myself more context and a better foundation with which to use those tools on top of these uh, mid gray principles that we've explored here today. So I hope you find this useful. Mid gray is one of my favorite subjects. It's one of my favorite aspects of color grading because I've seen so many times in my color grading practice, the power that it has to move me past making basic adjustments and corrective adjustments and to instead give me time to make the kind of finesse nuance adjustments that I believe really, really make an okay color grade or a decent color grade look awesome. Take it to that next level, take it to that pro level. So I hope you guys enjoy this and uh, enjoy playing with middle gray using these tools that I've shown you here in the video today.